Oh, hello. Welcome to another edition of Mr. Flynn's History's Moments. Today's moment we're going to focus on is some muckraking journalists, some of my personal favorite journalists in American history. We're going to look at Upton Sinclair, we're going to look at Jacob Brees, we're going to look at Thomas Nast. So take a look at these gentlemen and let me know what you think. That was pretty amazing, right? You got Jacob Rees, How the Other Half Lives in New York City, used photography to expose the horrific living conditions in New York City, mainly focusing on children, as you saw in the image there with the three kids in the, in the alley corner there. And then you saw Bandit's Roost in 1888. That was probably one of the most dangerous alleyways in New York City. And you can just tell by looking at the photo, would you really want to walk down that alley at, at night? And it's when that photograph was taken. And then you look in, Past that, you move into Thomas Nast, one of my all-time personal favorite cartoonists, whose main opponent was William Boss Tweed in New York City. Now, if you've ever seen Law & Order, the courtrooms that they do their, all their cases in, that's known as uh, New York City Courthouse. It used to be known as the Tweed Courthouse, and it's a whole huge uh, scandal that was involved in how that thing got built. Tweed is going to become a political party boss, giving out favors that never held elected position but ran the party and used the Irish to do all of his dirty work in New York City at the time. Then you focus, you have Upton Sinclair, who probably wrote one of the best books of the late 19th century, The Jungle, focusing on the meatpacking industries. You saw from some of the infographics that came across, focusing on child labor, horrific working conditions, all these things coming together that this truly was a progressive period in American history where people finally were sick and tired of being abused you know beaten down you know you don't want a 12 year old child working 13 hours in a factory with only maybe one break working Monday through Saturday I mean that's what they got paid you know the average job was only paying like you know a dollar a day if you had a more dangerous job say working on building bit uh, building uh, buildings like working on skyscrapers uh, you got double that maybe two three dollars a day it was rough work and but you know what you look at Reese's photos you see the exposure and how these people were treated and that's what Reese wanted to expose to the wealthy elite you wanted to show them this is what your greed has done to society so let's take a look at the political response to what these authors put out there let's take a look at Theodore Roosevelt's reaction That was pretty cool, right? Roosevelt's probably one of my all-time personal favorite presidents. He didn't mince words with people. He said it like it was and told people how it was. He was really upset, you know, how things went down with the meatpacking industry. He it exposed a lot of things and in fact passing the Meat Inspection Act, Pure Food and Dry Act, all these things coming out together. And, you know, all of it because of these three journalists, you know, Thomas Nass cartoons, most of the people, you know, in New York City time was a melting pot of society, immigrant nationalities. They couldn't read English, they could speak. English, but they could speak their own native languages, but they could understand what was going on in those cartoons that NASA was putting out there. As you saw in the one I put out there, you know, and counting their strength, you don't have to be able to read English to know exactly what's going on in that cartoon there, you know, or think about the population in New York City at the time, you know, and you look at Roosevelt's reaction to the meat industry, it's, it's no wonder these laws got passed and society's forever going to be changed because of this. I really hope that you kind of been enlightened by what you've learned about today with the progressive period and muckraking journalists. Journalists have power. 
They really do. They are America's watchdogs. They are there to protect you, me, and everybody else from, you know, abuses of society. So, with all of that in mind, I hope you all are staying safe, social distancing yourselves. I know we can be out in public today. It's so exciting to be out in public. But please remember, wear your mask six feet apart. Enjoy the beautiful weather that is here Monday morning in Jacksonville, Florida. And I'll see you next time on A Moment in History with Mr. Flynn.